Friends, you are welcome to this awesome Sunday service. Father Lord, we commit to this service into your hands. We ask that your presence overwhelm us, overshadow us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you. The Bible says, call upon me. I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Father, we call upon you because there is no other name that is given except the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bible says, in the name of Jesus Christ, every day shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the things in heaven, of the things on the earth, and of the things in the earth. Father, today we commit to this service. We ask that your angels come and attend to our prayers, that your presence come and make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. They believe in amen. Amen. In Psalm number 95, verse number 6, Psalm 95, verse number 6, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Father, Lord, we have come before you to worship you, to bow down before your awesome presence, to kneel before your glorious majesty. Father, in the name of Jesus, let our heavens be open. Let the doors and the windows of heaven be open unto us. Let us have access to your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let Jesus be exalted. At the end of the day, let God be glorified. Anoint today's service for miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. For the edification of souls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We believe in amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to, we're going to go straight into our worship and praise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship him and the beauty of his holiness. Oh, 
we should worship Him. Praise God. Praise i 
Ephesians chapter number one. We are going to take it precept by precept. Ephesians chapter number one. We are going to go to verse number four. Let's go to verse number four. All right, let's, re, let's take a step back to verse number three. To verse number three. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Are you there? It says, blessed be. Blessed be what? Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. It's blessing our God. Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Spiritual blessings. In heavenly places, what? With Christ. So we are blessed with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's continue to verse number four. Verse number four. Now, according as he had chosen us. Somebody say, I'm choosing. Choose How do you know that? You did not choose yourself. Did you choose yourself? No. Yes, that is what the book of John chapter 15 verse 16 says. He said, you, you, you did not choose me. I chose you. Amen. And I ordained you that you might go and bear fruits and that your fruits may remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father, that I will do it for you. John 15 verse 16. Very powerful scripture. Hallelujah. You did not choose me. I chose you. God said, I'm the one that chose you. Regardless of the, the knowing that even though that you were born in sin, the, of all the things that you have done, our, our lifestyle of stubbornness and you know, we, you know wickedness, we partake, we partook in all kinds of things. You know, like me growing up, I was stubborn. I wasn't, I was heady. I did a lot of bad things growing up. But, but look at me today, preaching the gospel. If someone that knows me when I was in high school, or probably when I was in college, you know, precisely, we have that can never predict in the future that this kind of person can preach the gospel. Can even touch the Bible, even though my grandfather was a pastor, but nothing like that in my DNA at all. And you know that. But today, he said, I'm the one that chose you. You didn't choose me. I what? I chose you. And I ordained you. So you have been ordained. And many of us are waiting for a pastor to pour oil on us and ordain us. But Jesus is saying, the one of us is saying, I've already ordained you. I chose you and what? I ordained you. Hallelujah. So the very first spiritual blessing is that you are chosen. The first spiritual blessing is that what? You are chosen. That you are God's choice. Look at it that way. That's your what? I am God's choice. It's something that you have to you know, treasure. It's something that you have to be thankful for. It's something because there's some people today, they are a they are, they are, they are, they are, they are in the mosque, they are in, in, in a occultic and idol, and they are bound down to idols of effigies, and, you know. But you, God has chosen you. Hallelujah. Many of you came from Muslim background too. God has what? God chose you. God see you. Like the way God chose Abraham. Are there no people in, in, in childbirth of all? Are there no people in that place? But God saw Abraham and chose him. He said, I have chosen you. You did not choose me. So, can you imagine, you know, like in those days when we play soccer, you know? And they go, okay, I'm going to choose your choose your people that we want to play with. You, you choose those that you know that can play very well. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you're not choosing, what do you do? You feel so sad. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You may not even want to come again. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, I chose you. I have picked you. I picked you from, from the pits like David was chosen. You see, there are about several other bigger brothers than David. But God does skip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. David eight. Hallelujah. The same thing with Joseph. Joseph was number 11. God had to pass what? Serubin, Simon, Jejuda. He had to pass all of them. Hallelujah. And he came second to the last. It's okay. Joseph, you're the one. Look at someone say you are the one. Yeah. You are a chosen generation. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are what? A chosen what? Generation. A generation that God has chosen. Hallelujah. Look at the book of First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. You are a chosen generation. I think there's a song like that. Hallelujah. But it's large, right? Amen. You are a chosen. That means this generation is a chosen. There have been generations before you are born. But this particular generation, you are what? A chosen 
generation. Amen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. And holy nation. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him that had what called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Amen. So the very first spiritual blessing that you have to be mindful of is that you are chosen. Hallelujah. You are what? You are chosen. Number two, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter number one. Let's go to verse number four. Number two, it says that you are, number two is that you are holy and blameless. Second spiritual uh, blessing is that you are holy and blameless. It's according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now that we should be what? We should be holy. Hallelujah. God chose you so that you can be what? Holy. So that you can be like him. He said, be holy for I am holy. So the grace to be holy. God knows that you can be holy. And that is why he said, be holy for I am what? Holy. Be like me. Be blameless. Amen. Be faultless. Hallelujah. When before, by the time you are in heaven, you are going to be blameless before God. You are going to be faultless. The devil will look for something, you will not see anything. Hallelujah. 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 Because you are covered by the blood. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord. You are covered by, by what? The blood. When God looks at you, he sees the blood. He doesn't see you. You are shielded by grace. You are covered by the blood covenant. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So be ye holy, for I am what? Holy. holy. First Peter chapter 1 16. Be ye holy, for I am holy. That means to be set apart for God. To be set aside for God to use. That means you will not be contaminated. Amen. That means you will not have one idol on the side. That means your life is set aside for God, for God to be glorified. Just like Paul wrote in the book of Romans, he said, I beseech you, brethren. By the mercies of God that you present yourself, amen. Amen. Present yourself what? as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Amen. Which is your reasonable service. I'm talking about Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Amen. Hallelujah. Which is what? You are reasonable. In living sacrifice, there it has to be holy and it has to be what? Acceptable, which is what you're reasonable. God wants to expect that after He has delivered you, that you should be reasonable enough to set yourself aside for Him to use you as a holy vessel. Amen. Like what we read in the book of First Peter chapter two, verse nine. An unholy nation, you are. We are an holy nation. Hallelujah. Look at it. Say, an holy nation. So we are a nation that has been set aside for God. In the book of Jude, chapter 24. Jude, chapter, verse 24. Jude has only one chapter. Amen. It speaks about that you will be presented. That God will keep you. He said, now nah, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy. Faultless. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going to present you. He's going to keep you faultless, blameless. So the second spiritual blessing, amen, is a, is a blessing that to God is of, of holiness and you know, being blameless. You are, you are being set aside to be what? A holy person and to be blameless. Hallelujah. Because the devil will look for something, he will never see anything. Because of what Jesus Christ did. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That means all your old records, old record of either gambling, stealing, fornicating, prostituting, doing all kinds of evil, gossiping, backbiting, envy, jealousy, all those things are old. They are passed away. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. And you made 
had a choice to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is blessing number two. Blessing number three is that you are predestined. Let's go back to our text. Ephesians chapter number one. Let's go to verse number five. You are predestined. Ephesians chapter one, verse nine. He said, having predestinated us. Hallelujah. Having what? Predestined. God has already predetermined. You see, he having predestinated us unto adoption. So that means before you are even born, like God told uh, Jeremiah, before you are even formed in your mother's womb, I have already ordained you a prophet. That means your, pro your, being, your, your, your prophecy, before you enter the mother's womb, you have been prophesying in the spirit. I have ordained you a prophet. Hallelujah. So in the realm of the spirit, you are, have existed already. So God has already predestinated. God knows the end and he knows what the beginning. Hallelujah. So he has already predestinated you as a child of God. It's a spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. So you are a special person before God. God has already prayed. You know, your destiny has already been what? Predetermined. That's what I'm saying. Your outcome has been what? Predetermined that you are going to succeed. You are going to make it. God already knew that you will be here today. Hallelujah. Amen. God already knows that you are, your life will give him glory. And all you have to say, all you have to do is what? Say yes, Lord. I say yes. Yes, Lord. I say yes. Yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes. Yes, Lord. We say yes. We say yes. Yes, Lord, we say yes, we say yes, yes, Lord, we say yes, we say yes, Lord, we say yes, Lord, we say yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Your future is settled. Your future is great. In the name of Jesus. He said, for God knew his people in advance. That's what they say. God knows you in advance. Hallelujah. God knows the people that the devil will use. God knew that you will serve him. He said, for God knew, knew the people he will use in advance. And he chose them to become like his son. So that his son will be first first born among many brothers and sisters. That is a new living translation. Hallelujah. Spiritual blessing number four. Spiritual blessing number four. Ephesians chapter number one verse five. It says, having predestinated us unto the adoption. Somebody say adoption. adoption. Somebody say adoption. adoption. Hallelujah. You have been adopted as a son. And as a daughter. You know, in this country, when you adopt, or in many countries, when you adopt somebody, he has all the rights. If you don't have a child, or even if you have a child, people some people have child and they still want more children. Amen. But the wife will say, Oh, I don't have I don't I can't afford more children. You know, they say, Okay, you can go and adopt. And they will adopt a child, they have the same rights. The same rights. So Jesus have the who have been adopted into the family of God. We are now members of God's family. So it is a big time blessing to know that you maybe you might not have family members here in America or somewhere, or maybe you have a family fighting you, but there's a different kind of family the family of the chosen, the family of those who have been predetermined, predestined. You are now in the family of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. That means there is there is a that you are now. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15, it speaks about you have been adopted as sons. You have been adopted. The book of Romans, it says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah. 
and came to fear but you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Where we cry our father. Hallelujah. Not everybody can pray that prayer. Except you have been adopted. And when you are adopted, you become like a co-heir. You become like a joint heir. That is, you, you, you are now co-heir with Jesus. That means all the things that belong to Jesus belong to you. Everything that the Father owns, you are also part of it. You are partaker of the body of Christ. You are now part of the what? The body. What do you call the body of Christ? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Somebody say, I've been, I've been adopted. I've been adopted in the family of Jesus. Somebody say, I'm a, I'm a member of the family of God. Shout hallelujah. Shout the big hallelujah. Spiritual blessing number five. You know, is you, we have been accepted in the beloved. We have been accepted what? In the beloved. Let's go to verse number six. Verse number six of Ephesians 1, number six. We have been accepted. Hallelujah. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. Do you know what it means to go somewhere you're not accepted? You go somewhere, you're being discriminated. You go somewhere, maybe in a workplace, nobody speaks to you. No, he has an accent, he has, he, you know, he behaves sometimes, he eats strange, strange food and stuff like that. And your dressing looks different, you walk different, you talk different, and there is a kind of gap. They're going to give you space. Or you go in a place where everybody seems to be welcome, but you're not welcome. But in the family of God, you have been accepted in the belong. So that is a spiritual blessing to know there's an acceptance. And that acceptance brings favor. It brings what? It brings what? Favor. When you are accepted, you are favored. You are highly favored. Hallelujah. When you are accepted, there's an endorsement. You have been endorsed. And this, this person is part of us. You are not a stranger. You are part of us. Somebody say, I am accepted. Somebody say, I am accepted. Shout hallelujah. Shout the big hallelujah. hallelujah. Number number one six now is redemption. Let's go to pastor number seven. Spiritual blessing number seven is that you have been redeemed. Hallelujah. You have been what? Redeemed. Is that when we is that like before we are born again, we are captives to the devil. We are held hostage by ancestral powers. But when you are, what Jesus did is that Jesus used his blood to go and taste it up and pay for the and pay for the release of that brother and pay for the release of that sister and I'm paying you in food and paying you with my blood because the price of blood is the highest price. Hallelujah! The price of blood is the highest price. Even the occult trade, the price of blood is the highest price. So Jesus said, it is finished. I'll pay your price in food. The devil has no more, you know, to can no longer contend with your life. You have been redeemed. You have been bought back. You have been bought with a price. Somebody shout, I am redeemed. Somebody shout, I am redeemed. So that redemption, you know, you regain your freedom. You are free from the shackles of sin. You are free from the bondage of the enemy. You are free from the eternal distortion. Devil hoping that he has captured somebody. All of a sudden, Jesus came to the back door and snatched your soul from the devil. Somebody said, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Shout hallelujah. No wonder Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of John 19, 13. He said, it is finished. It is what? It is finished. Hallelujah. That means I have paid the price of those who have given their life to Christ. I have paid your price in full. I have paid it in advance. You know what it means? Somebody to say, come, that how much is your mortgage? How much is your house? You say your house is 300000 He say, okay, the mortgage company. Okay, I'm giving you a check of 300000 Leave this guy. Don't send him any bill anymore. He's free from me. He's free from me. From those monthly mortgages. Somebody shout, I am free! So it's a spiritual blessing to know that you are free. 
you should walk in free. Hallelujah. You, you should be knowing that even though that you are physically, you are living this world, but spiritually you are free from every force of hell, from every generational ancestral hold, from every, every occultic mandate, from any family covenant that Jesus has set you free. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It says, verse number eight. Somebody say, forgiven. Somebody say, I have been forgiven. There is a difference between forgiveness and redemption. Redemption means she has brought you, you are out of the shackles of the enemy. But forgiveness means that the sins that you committed, and they have been redeemed, that he has forgiven you. Hallelujah. That is what grace does. By grace we are saved. So he forgives us of all our sins. He knows that you are not going to be perfect. He knows that you are not going to, if you try to be perfect, you will still not be perfect. Amen. But you have to strive for perfection. But God knows that you can never be perfect because you don't have the glorious, the, the, the ability to live in perfection. Only in heaven and where you can live what? In perfection. Hallelujah. So he made provision for forgiveness of sins. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 14. The book of Colossians. In whom that is in Christ. In whom we have what? Redemption through his blood. Even the Forgiveness of sins. So redemption and forgiveness is not the same thing. Redemption means you have been paid, you have been bought, you have been, you have been rescued from the devil. But forgiveness of sins means that your iniquity, the, the life of sin that you are, that you are living, God said, I have forgiven you. So I say, I look and say, I am forgiven. Say so you are forgiven. I know the kind of I don't know the kind of life you have lived in the past. I don't know the kind of things you have done or oh, since this year that may have offended God. But the Bible says say you are forgiven. By the reason of the blood of Jesus, you are forgiven. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody said we have inheritance. Somebody said we have what? Inheritance. Let's look at uh, the book of First Peter chapter 1, verse 4. First Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We have inheritance. That is spiritual and that's spiritual blessing. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. Inheritance. You know that sometimes when you feel, you know, the rich man you know, dies, he has he makes a will, right? For his children. In fact, back in the day, we used to you know a family that their father was so rich. They are even has like about nine or ten sons. They will always be praying that their father would die. It's a bad thing, you know? Because the man has so much money, but the man refused to die. <laughs> I mean, hallelujah. The man refused to die. I don't even know whether he's dead now. But what the point I'm trying to make is that because he has so much. He has written so much. You have this, you have three, four, five houses. You have this business. You have that business. So there are people that look up to their parents, you know, for their inheritance. So he's telling us to an inheritance. In, this type of inheritance is a spiritual inheritance. It's not a physical money inheritance. It's not like you want to get the stores or houses or bonds. These are spiritual inheritance. When we get to heaven, we will have a glorious body. He said it is not defiled. Hallelujah. And it cannot fade away. It is reserved. Somebody say it is reserved. It's reserved for me in heaven. Say my inheritance. Say don't kill yourself. Don't, don't destroy yourself. Because you have an inheritance in heaven. It has been reserved for you. It has been reserved for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. So there's an inheritance, a blessing, spiritual blessing in heavenly places. This blessing is with Christ. So the inheritance that Jesus has, you also have it. Because you are co heir You are joint heir. Hallelujah. There's a song like that. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heir with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are heirs of the Father. We are 
in all that ages was not made known unto the sons of men. It wasn't made known to the prophets, Elijah, Moses. It wasn't made known to Joshua. But now it has been revealed about the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Do you see that? Verse 6. That the Gentiles, that is the, this, this is the mystery, that the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs and, or, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Do you know that when Jesus Christ was, was alive, when Jesus was alive, his, his ministry was focused on the Jews. His ministry was not focused on the Gentiles. It was when he died and left that the mystery of the kingdom was revealed to Paul. And Paul was now going, was going about to other non-Jewish nations to begin to preach the gospel as Gentile nations. Amen. You and I are the Gentile nation. So before it was only made for, the gospel was only made available for the Jews in Israel. But as soon as Jesus died and resurrected, the apostles, like Peter, like Paul, James, amen, and now, of course, Paul came later. And now, the mystery was uncovered to them that the gospel should also be preached to the Gentile nations. The gospel should also be preached to other nations, like Africa, like Liberia, like Sierra Leone, like Nigeria, like all the nations of the world. So we are the Gentile nation. So that mystery, that blessing of the gospel has also come unto us. Somebody shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at verse number 13 and verse 14. The last blessing of the last ritual blessing in that scripture. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed. Ye we are sealed. Somebody say, I'm sealed. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the it is very the, so the, the last bless which your blessing is that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. Hallelujah. You know, in those days when kings want to write the letter, they have to seal it with their signature. Amen. They seal it. Nobody can open it except the person it is what addressed to. Hallelujah. You know, like when you have your wine, sometimes some wines are sealed. You have to unseal it and uncook it. Amen. So you, your salvation has been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I say your, your salvation has been sealed in whom also after that you believed. That belief, that means you have given your life to Christ. That you we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14. Which is the earnest of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. But what you, what you have to take from there is that your redemption, your salvation has been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. No devil, no witch, no wizard can unseal your salvation with Jesus. Hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Glory! 
are my personal savior. I believe that you are the son of God and that God raised you from the dead. Friends, you have said that you are a child of God. Behold, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is, he is a new creature. I congratulate you. You are a new creature in Christ. You have been recreated by the Spirit. Amen. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. You are now, your life is now written in the Lamb's book of life. You are redeemed and your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name. I will encourage you dearly, passionately, to prayerfully search for a church. You can join us if you are not led or if you are, if you are led, but prayerfully search for a Bible praying Holy Ghost church where you will disciple knowledge and where you can live a life of victory and you be able to run a, a race to the end in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. 